Do you love sexy video games? Well, Shades has got you covered. Dealsite has just launched an English website and is giving us a code to give to you. Sign up for a free account and enter this promotional code. You get a coupon for 30% off a game purchased. You know, I gotta admit, Terry, hanging out with you this week, it's been pretty decent. Yeah, and I actually don't have an urge to kill ya! I actually think we could coexist. You come back in this office and I will cut you nuts off! Well, well, well! Look who's gonna come in your homemade salsa! <gasps> you wouldn't dare! Whoopsie do! Here comes the goo! Welcome back to the Visual Novel Marathon. I'm Shades, and today we're finally going to take a look at one of the games in the Rant series. Right after I microwaved that friggin' rat! Fuck you, eggplant! It's time to look at a legend in the Japanese H game visual novel RPG scene, with us diving into the Rant series. Made by Alice Soft starting in 1988 about a warrior named Rance who is out to do the complete opposite of a traditional hero in games of this caliber. Instead, he wants to slam every broad over every country with his hyperweapon. One of the things I like doing most is banging whores. So, Mum, you're asking about my role model, your boy Rance. So this series is a continuing story with gameplay elements woven into the visual novel aspect. Today we're covering Sengoku Rants, aka Rants 7. So to give you some catch up, let's give you the backstory so far. So Rants the search for Hikari starts with our boy rescuing a princess. With his purchase slave Sil, they set out on a quest. Rants 2 the rebellious girl is about four girls training in the art of magic, and they seal the town of custom underground. Rance accepts the quest to head underground and slam some more magical caves. Rance 3 The Fall of Lizaz. In order to save the Princess Leah, a ninja tracks down Rance. But before they start their adventure, some under the sheets ninja action takes place. Rance 4 The Legacy of the Sect. Rance and Sil are teleported to a floating city, and so begins the quest to return to land. Rance 5D The Lonely Girl. And Rance 6 The Collapse of Zeth. Rance now in the kingdom of Zeth ends up in a bit of conflict, so it's up to Rance to lead Zeth to a revolution with sex along the way. As for Rance 5D, it's actually continuing from Rance 4, in the same universe. Rance is yet again blowing all his gold and decides to venture into some dungeons looking for work, and ends up in a castle inhabited by a yukai. At this point, things were looking grim for Alice Soft. Economic problems hit the company, so the team decided if this was their final moments, one more game with every idea they've ever wanted to put into a Rants game would be a great curtain call. Kichiko Rants is not part of the official timeline. Some people count it as 5 or 7, but it's always been classed as a what-if scenario. Rants wanted to become king, and to do this the team made the entire game about conquering the continent, meaning everyone's ideas were used. Nothing was left on the cutting room floor. When this game was released in 1996, it saved the company, becoming one of the most profitable games for Alisoft, and even became popular outside of the Eroge community. This game here is the turning point for the company, with it being a top selling Eroge game for over 10 years, allowing it to maintain its original price all that time, earning it the title, the most successful Eroge game of all time. And now we come to Rance 7, aka Sengoku Rance. In the far east, a group of leaders fight for the land during the Sengoku era, the land in tatters. Now Rance arrives with Sil for a vacation to bang as many women as he possibly can. To do this, he must wage war on the factions, with the gameplay system of the previous game and the legacy of the series. Did you get all that? Because that was probably the most explaining I've ever done on a lewd game. You're welcome. Oh wow! You actually did some research! Shut the fuck up! 
The series has been going on for so long, with Rants 10 around the corner, the conclusion of the series, I figured it was time to dive in and try one for myself. Sengoku was the one I heard about the most, being the most well-rounded. So let's suit up and head out. So the Oda encampment has noticed tension is rising among the factions. Just then, Rance enters with Sil to get things started. Nobu, being quite sick, is having to take some time behind the scenes, leaving Rance to lead the charge. Ha! Ah, dick first in the battle! Okay, let's talk about the battle system. The left is our troops. Each set of troops is led by a leader. Depending on their grid placement depends on certain things they can do. For instance, bow and arrows can fire from the back and the front, but short range weapons need to be in the front lines. Blocking can not just block that party, but block anyone within that row or column. Clicking on your team brings up the defense moves. If you click on the enemy units, you can use your turn to attack. Notice in the middle, the meter, that's the turns this battle will have. Each character has a set amount of moves they can use in battle to get things done. Some characters have special moves they can learn, but require the full move set or make them not able to move after using it, such as an assassination move. Once used, that unit set is no longer in play. Defeat the enemy or make them run out of moves to win. You can tell it's got sort of an advanced wars feel to it. Winning our first battle, pushing back the enemy, causes Rance to laugh in the air like a fucking maniac. So it's time for the celebration at the Nobu Tea House to discuss what Rance's roles will be. And I'm not kidding. It's for Rance to fill his black book by banging every girl he can meet from around the continent even if it means taking siege. I got my magnum condoms, I got my wad of hundreds, I'm ready to plow. But in order to take siege, we're gonna need some help for some peeps. One being... Oh, okay, yep, yep. There must be a gas leak in here because that guy's got three heads. This is 3G, an advisor to aid Oda into victory, with its key generals. I mean, just imagine it. He could eat nachos, eat out a girl, and recite poetry, all at the same time! He's a fucking god! After coming to terms with 3G, we head to the main map of the continent. Here is where we can see all the regions and where we are. That's us, the small scrape of cum dripping right there. But soon, our drip will be all over Japan. Ugh. It's here on the map that most things are done, and the story progresses. You have an action counter which gives you a set number of actions each turn before neighbouring factions make a move. Our troops tab, we can hire, recruit, and upgrade our troops and generals. Keeping levels up of our troops will help defence and victory. With our prison, any generals we capture can be converted with enough relationship building. Yeah, there's relationship building. You wanna work for me? No? What, you still hate me? <laughs> How about now? <coughs> what? And the balls? Well, I'm fucking... <coughs> so, each person can have a relationship built with them. Giving them items or interacting with them in your territories helps this, which makes them not just battle better, but also gives you the chance to get into some lady pants. Which brings us to Rance. He also has a satisfaction meter, which bears good things for you if you keep him amused. By amused, I mean food and fucking. Now, each area has not just relationship building, but tasks of the area such as bringing down riots or building defences, exploring dungeons for levelling or items, random encounter events for new characters, or even skill building. Much like my dick, there's a lot to take in. So let's not waste time, let's declare war on the Haru territory. Moving our troops in, we can take the first point of attack. Each territory has a set amount of castles to take, so be aware as you move your troops, because if you use your best in the first shot, when it's their turn, it's time for revenge. While we're waging war to the north, in Kaio, this shithead here, Ashikaga, keeps taxing us. Why? Because he's a fucking shithead, and I hate him. If we don't pay up, it's clear we're gonna get fucked the wrong way. But there's no time for that. Rance needs to clean his hyper weapon. Yeah, we're in mid war. We have a three headed fucker leading our second in line, and we have a Mr. Mime looking motherfucker wanting to turn us bankrupt, and Rance here wants to get his dick wet. Meanwhile, another continent decides to get in on the mix. Some raccoon looking mofo, Toku. Oh, that's my great grandfather! Nobody asked you! Watch him fuck your economy sideways, dipshit! 
So as the game progresses, other continents get in on the action. If they're just commenting on the war that we're currently in, or conflicting with others. It goes to show, these aren't just hollow pieces on a chessboard. Everyone is in play here. It gives a sense of threat. During one of the mid-break sessions, we bump into a ninja assassin named Suzumi, who wants to kill us. Rance has other ideas. So they head to the forest for some mid-war battle planning, when she reveals she has a poison pill up her hoo-ha, and poison rubbed all over her tits. If Rance made a mistake, he would have been dead. Ah yes, good start to a first date. With enough persuasion, we convince her to defect and join our orgy train to battle across the land, which just pisses off more continents. But again, the lewds outweigh the danger. We manage to take down Haru, stealing his territory, capturing him, and fucking his wife. And we even get Haru to work for us, and he likes us again after much persuasion. Rance should be the next US president. Imagine him tackling the conflict right now in North Korea. If he just waltzed on in with a heart on, it'd be over in a minute! Now it's time to take down the insane clown posse. Which isn't too hard. He mostly whinges about us attacking him. I mean, what did he expect? So we steal his slave girls and... You know what? After a stellar victory, it's time to hear a sales pitch. Oh! Lolly porn. I'm going to jail! I'm not kidding. These moments are littered throughout the game. Just bizarre little moments. And you would have to play the game several times to see them all. Completing certain events levels up characters to gain new skills or even more troops. You fucking freak! <laughs> You're a freak! <laughs> Square called, they want their Final Fantasy VII rig back. The characters' designs in the game are so fresh. Seriously, the game has kept me interested for hours already. I mean, look at this. I gain a skill which gives me the option of a special old man. I could take all these options to increase battle size or make it weigh in my favor, but you know what I'm gonna click. I'm gonna click the special old man. game is fucking phenomenal in terms of visual novel. I'm so fucking engaged, and I don't just mean the sex appeal, which it rewards us as often as we can take it, but this game is just jam-packed with everything. The combat system is solid, and moving of continents builds the game's time, but doesn't take away from the real meat of it all. The characters are all fun, and even hilarious at times, all having their own personality. It never feels like I'm talking to 50 of the same type of person. And there's a lot of people in this game, so that's maximum effort. The game has multiple genres, such as RPG, visual novel, and even a sim day aspect, which just adds more layers. The music is tight. I didn't mention this before, but every scene the music just fits perfectly. I love what they've done. And with hundreds upon hundreds of events, there is no way to see it all within the first round, which gives me a reason to return and plow in another direction. The story gets deep. Like, crazy deep. There's a heavy spoiler which I will refrain from telling, but it's worth just to see what the direction the conclusion goes in. And with our score, it all depends on the final outcome. To top it all off, there's a bonus menu we can read letters from the creators of the game, such as the artists and coders telling what was cut from the game, what secrets to look for, and even showing us funny parody scenes of events that didn't even make it into the game. If you ever wanted to pick up the Rant series, start with this one. It's solid and has everything needed. This is without a doubt pleasing, and one of the best visual novels I've ever played. If this review doesn't sell you on how much I enjoyed it, or what it has to offer, nothing will. Now that you're finished with this 
hentai business, we got a score to settle. Wait, what are we even arguing about? Well, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of forgot. Well, I don't really care anymore. Me neither, really. You, uh, you want to do some shots? Sure! Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to keep up to date with the latest DAT goodness, click the subscribe button and don't forget to click like on this video. Also, if you guys want to see some exclusive and uncensored DAT game episodes, including extra content, you can support us on Patreon. And if you want to wear DAT game, you can head on over to our store and get some sweet shady shirts and merch. Thanks again for watching. I mean, just imagine it. He could eat nachos, eat out a girl, and recite poetry, all at the same time! He's a fucking god! Yeah, I couldn't think of a third thing <laughs> that I would want to do if I had three heads. And you'd want to recite poetry. Well, I thought it was, I thought it was the funniest thing to say, because I was like, third. if I had three heads, what would I do? And then I was like... It's funny because you wouldn't recite poetry. Yeah. But then I was like, I could watch Netflix, but then I would be like, well then that head would be jealous of the other two heads eating nachos and eating out a girl. I'm giving you logic about why I'm... <laughs> I just realised. I'm like, I'm trying to de deconstruct the joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, this next line will just make you go, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing really well. Yeah, I know, because I, I don't want to smile when I do it, but I feel like the smiling might sell it. <laughs> Why is this line getting me? That's <laughs> such a bad joke. <laughs> That's how you know it's a bad script, when you laugh at your own jokes. <laughs> it's not even that funny. Like, it's I'm not even that so funny. so underwhelmed. You are going to be underwhelmed, but it's going to be like one of those things where you're going to be like, Jesus Christ, like... Like you do the JFK... 90%. JFK what disappointment. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright. Much like my dick, there's a lot to take in. That was the. Oh, that was it. That's it. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. I actually don't have an urge to. Hang on, stop. I don't like the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Fucking cut it. Let's get to the center here. Oh.